Let's update you on tonight's top stories. A pledge of billions of dollars for infrastructure and a maritime surveillance initiative. The U.S.-led Quad Group vows to boost engagement and security in the Indo-Pacific. The Quad leaders also say they reject coercive or provocative actions to change the status quo in what's said to be a veiled reference to territorial ambitions of uh, Russia and China. And uh, for more on this story, Jonathan Barksha Miller with the Indo-Pacific Programme, the Macdonald Laurie Institute in Canada, joins us live. Ms. Miller, uh, let's start with a few concrete outcomes from this Quad uh, Summit. And that's a satellite initiative uh, to boost maritime in, uh, intelligence, uh, apparently to tackle illegal activities such as uh, trafficking as well as illegal fishing, without mentioning that China is the single largest illegal fisher in the Indo-Pacific. So we're looking at security adjacent functions like these uh, being uh, boosting capabilities that can help tackle China without being specifically anti-China. Uh, is this uh, how the Quad is going to be framing its moves in the future? And if it is, does it bode well for its continued survival? Well, thanks so much for having me on. And yes, as, as you pointed to, this is one of the key deliverables uh, from the Quad. Uh, and I think looking at this uh, maritime surveillance and maritime domain awareness issue is just one example of the Quad sort of evolving from uh, being purely symbolic uh, and in nature to now being quite tangible and providing goods not just for the four uh, states involved in the Quad, but actually providing international goods for the region of the Indo-Pacific more broadly, uh, be it in Southeast Asia, be it in South Asia. So I think this initiative on maritime domain awareness, which will have to help combat uh, illegal fishing and other elements that are not just focused on the hard security issues such as territorial disputes, is a really important direction for the, uh, for the unit. But you could equally say having such broad aims such as, and right now, uh, the Quad has working groups for the economy, technology, cybersecurity, health, education, pretty much anything you can think of the Quad is working on for the Indo-Pacific. Are these, brain, these aims just too broad to actually deliver in a concrete way that can make people say, yes, the Quad is a, success, is a successful grouping? Well, it's a fair point. I think in the, in the end of the game, the Quad's going to have to focus on a few issues. It, it can talk about the broad area of, of focus. The, the reality is you have four nations here that care about a, a, a range of different issues, and I think it's, it's okay to talk on those. But I think you're right. There's going to have to be a couple uh, crown jewels that are the main things that the Quad focuses on. I think maritime domain awareness and maritime security should be one of them. Another one that I think is really important, and there, there has been some work on it, uh, as shown by this communique, is infrastructure development. You know, frankly, the region needs infrastructure. Uh, China is, has been providing one, but that's under its own sort of uh, policy of the Belt and Road Initiative, which many states in the region have concerns about. So a real focus on infrastructure provision uh, in a transparent way is, is another key uh, area to focus on. Mr. Miller, surely one of the crown jewels should be security, however you want to phrase this. And yet we had the grouping come out with a joint statement which did not mention Russia in the invasion of Ukraine. But after that, the Japanese prime minister coming out to say precisely that what Russia is doing is shaking the, the fundamental principles of the international order. If the group is unable to state the obvious uh, presumably out of India's considerations for its, its, where it buys its weapons right now. Do you see this as a good thing, that despite these internal differences, they did reach a joint statement? Or do you think the fact that there exist these internal differences could lead to more dangerous divisions in the years or the months to come? Well, I think it's a fundamental challenge. And obviously, uh, we know that, uh, especially on the issue of, of uh, Russia's war in Ukraine, that there has been some division, some differences of opinion, in particular, uh, uh, India, as you mentioned. Uh, that being said, I think it's important to keep focused on what the Quad is meant to do and what it's, uh, what it's focused on. And primarily, that's in the Indo-Pacific region. Again, I think those who have global ambitions for the Quad to, you know, almost be a successor to the G7, I think they're realizing that that's probably not going to happen. Uh, and that there are certain issues that there is uh, some daylight between the four sides. I think that's okay. 
I think it's okay. In the, in the end of the day, you have four uh, separate and independent nations who have their own interests and have their own views uh, on the world. Um, that being said, I think on the core issues in the Indo-Pacific and some of the security issues in that part of the world, uh, there's a lot more uh, convergence than divergence. And thanks for that. Jonathan Bakshar Miller from the Indo-Pacific Program from McDonald-Laurie Institute in Canada. Thanks for speaking to us.